Hi, I'm Cheryl Coolier, the Open Education Librarian at the University of Arizona. Thank you for viewing this lightning talk on inclusive and equitable access to course materials. Let's start by defining inclusive access. It's basically a digital course material rental. Details can vary, and it may go by a different name, like first day at Barnes & Noble. But this is how it works at the U of A. All students in a course get free access to the inclusive access content by the first day of class through our learning management system. Students have until the class's add drop date to opt out. If they choose to opt out, they lose access to the content, but don't get billed. If they take no action, access continues and the cost is added to their bursar's account so they can use financial aid to pay for it. Very few U of A students opt out about one to 10%, depending on the semester. In exchange for so many sales, publishers say they'll offer deep discounts. Here, McGraw-Hill advertises discounts of 50 to 80%. Our U of A bookstores say they average 50% off the new print price. Data from the National Association of College Stores show exponential growth in inclusive access. Analyst Phil Hill notes that use has nearly doubled every year since 2016-17. I see pros and cons to the inclusive access model. Students can benefit when materials are ready on day one and available digitally. This has been increasingly important as we have more online courses in global campuses. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, inclusive access platforms Vital Source and Redshelf temporarily offered students free access to e-texts from some publishers. The free access ended in May 2020, but it was helpful to some of our courses that it suddenly moved online and were scrambling for ebooks. According to our Disability Resource Center, accessibility is better with ebooks than with print. It saves students time in comparison shopping. And it can save students money. Some possible drawbacks, though. If a student wants print, that costs extra. The emphasis on digital content shrinks the used print market, making it harder for students to save money with used books. Students can't resell or share inclusive access materials. If a student repeats a class, they may have to buy the material again. Bundling with courseware makes opting out difficult. If the courseware is the only way to take tests or turn in homework, students have to have it to pass the class. And analytics equals surveillance, which we could talk about extensively. Inclusive access is widely used on my campus. I have to say that our bookstore is a fantastic partner in all of my library's course material affordability initiatives. As a campus-owned store, they really do put students first. The way they run inclusive access avoids some of the pitfalls highlighted in this 2020 US PERG report. Their pricing is transparent, it's easy for students to opt out, and they have no quotas. The bookstore and I developed some recommended best practices for inclusive access, which I'll share in a resource list at the end. The University of California Davis store came up with the term inclusive access. Many bookstores follow their lead on course material models, which is why I think it's important for their new equitable access plan to be on your radar. UC Davis began piloting equitable access in fall 2020. It's marketed to students as like Spotify for textbooks. For $199 per quarter, students get all of their textbooks and courseware. According to UC Davis, 85% of the content is digital, 15% is print, and students keep to keep the print. Students can opt out. The model leverages library licensed ebooks and open educational resources to lower student costs. They say that 2,440 students using equitable access were assigned OER this academic year. For each student using OER, the bookstore pays $10 to the library's Open Aggie program to further increase OER adoptions. I see some possible advantages to UC Davis's model. Some are similar to the benefits of inclusive access. 
The predictable costs make it easier for students to budget and plan. They say students like the ease and convenience of having all of their course materials in one spot in Canvas. STEM students aren't penalized with higher prices. We've heard anecdotally of students choosing their majors based on course material costs. That's no good. I like the high level of bookstore library collaboration and the incentives for OER use. My concerns include some students paying more than they normally would. So students above this blue line pay less, but students below the blue line pay more with equitable access. If faculty fail to report their adoptions to the bookstore, they're not included in equitable access. With an all you can eat model, I wonder if faculty will become less cost conscious, adopting more courseware, more books or pricier books. And this model could be challenging for other campus campuses to replicate. If it covers all undergraduate courses, it can't be rolled out incrementally like my campus did with inclusive access piloting with a few courses at first to work out the technology kinks. Widespread implementation issues could neg negatively impact students. And personally, I dislike the name equitable access. I understand why UC Davis chose it. It's tied to their campus strategic plan, but I don't think a model with winners and losers meets the definition of equitable. What's a better name? That's something we can discuss this week. If we look at the definition of inclusive, that actually fits the equitable access model better. Inclusive as in covering or intended to cover all items, costs, or services, like an all-inclusive resort. US PERGs and other advocates say automatic billing is a more accurate name than inclusive access for that model. From a social justice standpoint, free access levels the playing field for all students, but the course material landscape is really complex and it's vital for faculty to have the academic freedom to choose the best content for their courses. They're the experts on the subject matter, as well as the scope, sequence, and learning objectives. As a librarian, I see my role as offering options. When I work with U of A faculty, I present a range of free or low cost choices. I frame it as a spectrum of affordability and I have to credit Stephen Bell at Temple University for inspiring that term. First, I encourage faculty to look at OER since they're free, customizable, provide perpetual access and offer opportunities for open pedagogy where students become creators, not just consumers of content and can share it with the world. Next, we look at library licensed materials like unlimited user ebooks, articles and book chapters, and streaming video. Access to these usually isn't perpetual, but it's free to students because the library pays for it. Materials aren't customizable. If free to use options aren't available or aren't a good fit, I encourage faculty to contact the bookstore about inclusive access. I recommend that they press publishers for a discount of at least 50% off the new print price and watch out for future price hikes. I also discourage courseware. All options in this spectrum offer day one access, which is critical for student success. They also emphasize digital access, which became urgently needed during the pandemic and I think will continue to be in high demand. In a February 2021 session on innovative textbook procurement models hosted by Open Oregon Educational Resources, Jason Lorgan at the UC Davis store said, we're not saying equitable access is a perfect program. There is no such thing. This program has its flaws like everything else. Instead, the bookstore asks, is it better than what we had last year? I think that's a great question. Faculty, administrators, instructional designers, librarians, and all kinds of campus partners share the same student success goals. How can we all work together to achieve them and remove barriers to student access? To learn more about equitable and inclusive access, I've compiled some resources in a Google Doc at this bit.ly link. I look forward to discussing this topic with you on Slack and during the live panel. 
Thanks for watching.